Start. Protein metabolism disorder. Protein, very important uh, substance in our body because this is building, building material. Protein is uh, consists of polypeptide chains, peptide, and every peptide chains consists of amino acids. Amino acids are uh, we have multiple amino acids. Yes, amino acids about uh, uh, ten or more what we can receive from out outside. This is our amino acid. And other amino acid we can synthesize in our body. Yes. Uh, then, <laughs> about protein metabolism disorder. First point is digestion absorption disorder. We know that the proteins are digested in our body in stomach by pepsinogen and in duodenum by trypsinogen and chemotrypsinogens. Then they are di digested in two amino acids. Then absorb, absorb them uh, uh, through the intestinal wall. If no digestion due to, for, for example, stomach disorder, stomach disorder, or pancreatic uh, juice, uh, pancreatitis, no pancreatic juice, then protein will not be digested. Then it will, it will not be absorbed to our body. It will be removed. We will lose protein. Lost protein, we call it uh, malnutrition, malnutrition, and mainly protein malnutrition. Protein malnutrition, we have a disease, we call this disease kwashiorkor, core. Kwashiorkor core disease, yes. Malnutrition protein. <clears throat> then, this about digestion absorption disorder. If it's normal, if our amino acids are digested and absorbed, then they will go to our body. Mainly, first, they will go to liver. Liver will take multiple protein, uh, amino acids to itself. Why? Because the main main uh, main organ uh, uh, in which um, yeah, most of all doing and produced protein is liver that's why he takes a lot of amino acid how we doing amino acids in our body uh, process we call it transamination transamination means from amino acid we convert into um, other an amino acid by exchange of amino groups we know that, you have to know that amino acid, every amino acid, it consists of two parts, uh, uh, amino group, amino group, and ket alpha keta group, alpha keta group, uh, and amino group then uh, NH, NH3. Amino group mainly it's NH3, NH3, ammonia, ammonia, understood? and alpha keta group. Other words, amino acids consist of uh, NH3, ammonia, and alpha keta group. Any amino acids consistent. <laughs> According to alpha keta group, our, our amino acid, uh, they are difference. Difference amino acids. According to alpha keta group, which this, then uh, which amino acid. <clears throat> so transamination from amino acid convert into other amino acid. This we can uh, uh, we can produce other amino acid. How uh, or what we need for this for transamination transamination for transamination from amino acid till other amino acid we need enzyme enzymes we call these enzymes transaminase enzymes and we have in our cells multiple like these enzymes for example in liver we have ALT AST ALT AST. In, in, in heart also we have creatinine phosphokinase, for example, like these enzymes. They all the time they produce amino acids. <clears throat> for these, enzy these enzymes, they need for co-ferment, co uh, co and this co they can receive from vitamin B6, periodoxal vitamin. He gives co for these enzymes. So, how transamination could, could be disordered? If no vitamin B6, if low intake vitamin, or we lose, for example, in case of pregnancy, vitamin B6, then these enzymes will be non-functional. And this, then transamination will not be occur in our body. <laughs> Here, I wanted to say that this process also could be hereditary. For example, this enzyme, hereditary, no. And this amino acid cannot be converted into this. This amino acid will be accumulated in our body 
in our fluids, in blood, and will uh, in brain, and will uh, will exerted with urine. For example, phenylalanine. Phenylalanine cannot be converted into tyrosine. Then in blood, in uh, brain, fluid, cerebral fluid, and then with urine, we call this disease phenylketonuria. Phenylketonuria. Alcaptonuria, alcaptonuria also yeah. from this cannot be converted, hereditary. So what is in general, uh, if transamination will not be occur in our body due to hereditary or acquire uh, deficiency of the enzymes, what it will lead to? It will lead that this amino acids will be accumulated in blood and then will be lost with urine. Accumulated in blood, we call it hyperacidoaminemia, hyper hyperacido uh, acido ammonia ammonemia hyperacido ammonemia means high amino acid in blood and they will be lost with urine we call it acido uh, acido aminuria they will be lost with with the uh, understood for uh, this is a good test to to find which amino acid we have problem in our body we just do blood analysis, we find which amino acid more. This amino acid means we have problem that this amino acid can be converted into other amino acids. <laughs> what does desamination mean? Desamination or deamination, deamination. Destru destruction of amino acid into alpha keta group and, uh, and an H3. Also for this process, we need vitamin B6. So vitamin B6 for transamination and deamination. If B6 uh, no, or hereditary no, or enzyme no, it will lead to what? That this amino acid cannot be destroyed. Then it will lead to what? This amino acid will be accumulated in blood and then with urine. Understood? Hyperaminoacidemia and, hyper and aminoacidemia. <coughs> what does decarboxylation? Decarboxylation, what does it mean? If transamination is amino acid into amino acid, Deamination, destruction of amino acid. Decarboxylation means amino acid into uh, biological active products. For, uh, I mean mediators, for example, serotonin, histamine, uh, like these mediators. Yes, this is decarboxylation. Me, uh, normally, decarboxylation we have in our body. For example, in kidney, kidney uh, it produces usually uh, prostaglandin. E1, E2, and they control our blood pressure. They dilate visible. It's normal. But decarboxylation could be uh, active in some damage, in, in inflammation, in allergy. In, in the place of allergy or inflammation, this locally, it can be act active. And this amino acid, they will produce here, these mediators, serotonin, histamine, like this, prostaglandin. And what they doing? They're doing vasodilation. That's why redness, because blood flow high, dilation, understood? Uh, this about decarboxylation. Then, next point is uh, blood protein disorder. We know that blood protein, they have, uh, it has count. The most, uh, the most protein in blood, uh, the biggest count is albumin. Then, globins. Globins, then uh, fibrinogen. This is the... Uh, protein, uh, blood protein count could be less of protein, we call it hypoproteinemia. Hypoproteinemia, we already said, could be malnutrition or we lost protein. We lost protein by burning, by urine, for example, or liver diseases. We have, uh, uh, liver cannot produce proteins. What it will lead to? Low resistance of the body because no Im immune globulin synthesis. They are also protein. Uh, oncotic pressure less than edema in our body, oncotic pressure. No protein, so oncotic pressure less. So edema. Uh, <laughs> uh, about this, about uh, hypoproteinemia. Could be the opposite, could be hyperproteinemia. Hyperproteinemia, yes, it's rare, but also. Hyperproteinemia could be due to what? For example, it could be absolutely and relative. Absolutely when our body uh, synthesizes more proteins. Yes, for example, in cancers or tumors. Tumors, what is tumor? Multiple cell. Multiple cell means multiple protein. Understood? Hyperbotanical, absolute. And relative. Relative, 
protein protein count normal but we lost fl fluid dehydration so relatively protein more understood this hyperproteinemia Next is dysproteinemia. Dysproteinemia, what does it mean? When the uh, relation between proteins uh, in blood, they are uh, changed. For example, globulins become more than albumins like this. We call this dysproteinemia. Paraproteinemia. Paraproteinemia. When we find in blood defect protein, it means uh, abnormal protein. For example, cryoglobulin. Abnormal protein. Finally, what is azotemia? Azotemia, the scientists give this name for all proteins in the products which contain azot. For example, urea, uric acid, ammonia, together we call it azot. Azotemia could be also hyperazotemia, hypoazotemia. In general, we have azot, azot balance. Azot balance, we have intake uh, equal uh, out, uh, equal, uh, equal what we use in our body. This azot balance, yes. Could be hyperazotemia and could be hypoazotemia. Hyperazotemia uh, could be two types, liver and kidney, means hepatic and renal. And we give it other name, hyperazotemia. Liver, we call it productive hyperazotemia due to high products or, uh, or difficult in products also. And renal, renal we call it retential hyperazotemia. Why? Because accumulation of azot in our body due to kidney failure, for example. This about azotemia. <laughs> Finally, end products of protein disorder. Yes, end products of protein also could be disordered. Which end products, end products of protein, of protein metabolism? We know three, yes? Ammonia, Urea and uric acid. Ammonia, this ammonia, we said about ammonia. When uh, amino acids are destroyed and they continuously destroyed in our body because we, we need to transaminate into other. So <coughs> ammonia is very toxic and very toxic for brain. How to deal with ammonia? How to deal with ammonia? Ammonia, NH3, goes to liver, in liver, we know there is one cycle, we call it ornithine cycle. It converts uh, ammonia into urea. So uh, uh, ammonia normally become less in our blood and urea become more. And they together, they will excrete it with urine normally, like this. So in case of liver diseases, ammonia will be accumulated in our blood. Will, uh, will lead to hyperammonemia. Hyperammonemia it's dangerous because it's toxic for brain and can lead to coma. And we call this coma, hepatic coma. We have other way in our body to deal with ammonia. If liver, if liver is failed. And, uh, we have kidney and we have intestine. They can also do urea, but uh, less force about, uh, than, than liver. We have third, third method, third way to deal with ammonia. Which way? Do you remember I said amino acids consist of ammonia and alpha keta group? If ammonia, we have more. So we just need to connect it with alpha keta group to synthesize any amino acid, yes? Where we have alpha, alpha, keta, alpha keta group usually? We have it in Krebs cycle. If you remember, alpha keta glutarate. So we take alpha keta glutarate from Krebs cycle and connect it with ammonia. And then we can synthesize glutamine acid. Yes, it's good because we have, we decrease ammonia, but bad because we stop Krebs cycle. Because we take one product from Krebs cycle. So Krebs cycle stopped. Then acetyl coenzyme A will not go to Krebs cycle. It will lead to synthesize of ketone bodies. And it leads to ketoacidosis. Understood? So again, hyperammonemia can lead to ketoacidosis. Why? Because ammonia takes alpha keta glutarate from Krebs cycle to synthesize glutamine acid. Then Krebs cycle stopped. Then acetyl coenzyme A cannot enter to Krebs cycle. And it will be converted into ketone bodies. Can you imagine? This is hyperammonemia. Yes, it's bad. This is about ammonia. About ammonia. 
about uric, uric acid. Uric acid is the end the products from pyramid uh, from DNA amino acids. Uh, uh, do you remember for amino acids of DNA? A, C, G, or rather, for amino acids from the Yes, by their metabolism, we, we get uric acid from them as an end product. How to deal with uric acid? We have endogenous factor. This endogenous factor uh, connected with uric acid and do it, do it soluble. Why? To transport it into kidney. And kidney removed by urine. Understood? In some cases, could be hereditary, we have no endogenous factor. Then uric acid become non-soluble. Non and it will be accumulated in our body in small vessels, mainly in joints. And it will be cr crystallized and become a salt and tract water and joint become swelled. And we call this disease, yes, gouter disease. So gouter disease is one of uh, diseases of endoproducts of protein metabolism, uric acid accumulation of, and it's mainly in, in uh, yes, in, in food, and uh, there. Uh, in the past, they call this disease uh, the rich people disease. Rich people. Why? Because uric acid, we can get more from meat when we eat a lot of meat and drink beer together. In the past, could eat meat and drink be uh, beer just rich people and it's become uh, become uh, yeah, usually among them among rich people that's why they give this disease this name rich people disease but uh, then well, it could be uh, yes I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, but, uh, finally what i wanted to say if liver is uh, failure or damaged then no protein synthesis. What it will lead to? It will lead to multiple problems in our body. Why? Because, look please, liver synthesized albumin. So less albumin, so uh, uh, less transport function of the blood, oncotic pressure less, edema, and so on. Liver synthesized globulins. Uh, globulins, among them we have gamma globulins, um, uh, uh, antibodies, immune globulins. So less resistance of our body. Yeah. Then, uh, liver synthesized protein for acute phase response, for, uh, for inflammation if we have to protect, and uh, complement system. No complement system, no, also less resistance. Finally, liver produce what? Reduce proteins of coagulation system, coagulation factors. So no coagulation, bleeding. Can you imagine? Multiple problem if we have uh, liver according to protein metabolism, I mean. And even protein can synthesize what? Some protein, uh, liver can, pro uh, can synthesize some protein which uh, entering in, 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 uh, in hormone, for hormone. For example, thyroglobulin for thyroid hormone. So no thyroglobin, so less thyroid hormones, hypothyroidism even. Can you imagine? That's right. In general, this is what I wanted to say about protein metabolism disorder. Thank you very much.